The following story and photos are from Giant Panda King's book, Gotham 1919-1939, by Russell S. Beatty, available from www.giantpandaking.com. Viewer discretion is advised. In the early 1920s, the streets were rocked by Gotham's gang war. On one side was the Falcone crime family, on the other was an unexpected new player. Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot was born to Esther Cobblepot and Bill Tucker, an abusive drunkard. Bill used to beat Oswald and his mother with an umbrella. The only reason he had a child with Esther was because he wanted an in to the Cobblepot's wealth. This only caused Esther's father to disown her and cut all ties. Bill soon ran off, having become bored with the family he'd never wanted. Esther, impoverished and abandoned, had to move to the slum known as the Barrows. Though she did not have much money, she spent every cent she had on making Oswald feel special. She fed him well and dressed him in nice clothes. Her hope for him was that he would one day be able to re-enter the high society she had once been a part of. Unfortunately, this only led to bullying from his peers regarding his weight and the clothes he wore. It earned him a nickname that he hated, but that would follow him for the rest of his life. The Penguin. Oswald realized he had a choice. Either he could continue to bear the brunt of bullying, or he could retaliate and strike back. He chose the latter. Taking an umbrella, the instrument of so much abuse in his childhood, he confronted the biggest bully on his street. He used the umbrella to break the bully's nose and arm, thus gaining the respect of his peers through fear. One thing led to another. First, he took over his street, then his block, and then his entire neighborhood. By the time Oswald was 25, he ran half of Gotham's underworld. He now bore the name Penguin with pride. Eventually, he attracted the attention of the Falcone crime family. Carmine Falcone was the last remnant of Sicilian mobsters in Gotham. His organization had been around the longest in the city. With the coming of the Batman, however, it became clear that Carmine was unable to adapt to this new brand of costume vigilantes and criminals. Falcone, feeling threatened by the Penguin, made the first move in what erupted into the Gotham Gang Wars, which ultimately led to Falcone's organization crumbling. Penguin, now with Gotham's underworld at his fingertips, began to utilize this new brand of masked criminal. He was known to employ the Killer Moth Gang from time to time, and also hired Floyd Lawton, aka Deadshot, to assassinate the Batman. Reveling in his newfound wealth and power, Oswald saw fit to track down his mother's family and murder them in retribution for disowning his mother. He also made connections with Al Capone, based in Chicago. Together, they struck a deal to take down Big Jim Colosimo. Capone agreed to stay out of Gotham in exchange for help taking down his biggest rival. Oswald agreed, enjoying his uncontested reign over Gotham City. Over the years, Oswald created a network of illegal speakeasies and booze runners. The most popular legitimate front for his illegitimate business was the Iceberg Lounge. This nightclub brought in all sorts of people from middle class and high society. It was considered a mark of wealth to be seen at Oswald's club. Umbrellas remained a trademark of his personal brand. He had craftsmen customize them to suit a whole number of purposes, ranging from guns to knives to disguised billy clubs. The object of his childhood fear would become the fear of others. 
All of these ventures made him one of the richest men in America, with even the Batman struggling to keep him locked up. It took the team of Lucius Fox and Barbara Gordon, aka Oracle, to take him down. They tracked down Oswald's accountant, Noah Cutler. Using the information obtained from Cutler's arrest, they determined that Oswald had not declared or paid any income tax in over 10 years. The Batman brought this evidence to the Treasury Department and they were finally able to bring down the Penguin. Even though he was arrested for tax evasion, there were plenty of other nefarious and more gruesome crimes he committed. The name of the Penguin struck fear into the hearts of criminals and law-abiding citizens alike. He was not, however, the only bird-related scourge to plague Gotham, as was about to come to light. Towards the end of his incarceration at Blackgate Federal Penitentiary, Oswald became severely ill and was released to Gotham General Hospital, where his condition worsened and he eventually passed away. The Penguin's empire had crumbled as well, marking the end of traditional organized crime in Gotham City. Many would try to obtain the legendary status that the Penguin had achieved, but all would fail. Oswald Cobblepot was, and always will be, the most successful crime lord Gotham has ever seen. Thank you.